Welcome to the sixth part of the presentation series, Introduction to Sampling for Mineral Processing. In the previous videos, we looked more at the specifics of sampling and samplers. In this video and the next one, we will look at the potential effects of incorrect or poor sampling. Here we will look at the effects of sampling errors on mass balancing, which will include some aspects of the Amira code, detrimental effects of metallurgist responsibilities, sampling errors in launder and pressure samplers, and mass balance effects. Here is just a quick review of good sampling. Sampling by definition is the removal of a small representative portion from a total consignment or flow for the purpose of accounting or process control. Each particle of the sampling lot must have the same probability of being included in the final sample. A sample can only be considered representative if each and every increment collected in each of the sampling stages is representative. If both the above conditions are met, then the final sample will be representative of the complete sampled lot. The theory of sampling indicates that in order to collect a representative sample, the cut or sample must be taken across the complete section of the stream. The sampler's cutter should intersect the stream at right angles to the flow and the sample cutter should travel through the stream at a linear and constant speed. The maximum speed deviation should be less than 5%. Recently in the mineral processing industry, there has been the introduction of a Myris P754 code of practice for metal accounting. In this code, the following assertions are made. The metal accounting system must be based on accurate measurements of mass and metal content. Sampling systems must be correctly designed, installed, and maintained to ensure unbiased sampling and an acceptable level of precision. Also stated, it is vital that samplers are inspected and cleaned at least once every shift. This requires that the complete cutter can be viewed. Submerged or encased cutters or nozzles cannot meet this requirement. Here is an example of a linear sampler showing ports for inspection and cleaning, as suggested by the Myra code. You can see that the cutter is clean, it is capturing an increment of the complete flow, and there is no loss of particles due to backflow out of the cutter. Problems with non-representative samples are the ratio of fines to coarse or light to heavy particles entering the fixed cutter or nozzle will vary even without fluctuations in the process. These kind of samplers contain a bias, which is not constant. Segregation by particle size or density is always present and there is no guarantee that the slurry to be sampled is homogeneous. Segregation is caused by pipe bends or intersections before the sampler and these kind of errors change over time due to fluctuation in feed tonnages, particle size, densities, flow rates, pressures, and other things. This is an example of a launder sampler with static cutters where sampling can be inaccurate. Again, the portion of fine to coarse or light to heavy particles is affected going into the cutter. These are designed to work within certain flow rates. The bigger the particle, the tighter the limits. And these samplers are often flooded or have back pressure at exits if the sampling system is not designed properly. This is an example of what may happen when the flow rates change in a launder or pressure sampler. The top section here shows an example of the percent copper and iron in a final tail sample. You can see that the assays of copper and iron in the top size fractions, the plus 150 microns, is a lot different than the assays at the bottom size fractions the 2 to 15 microns. In this case, the assays of the bulk material are 0.047% for copper and 3.56 for iron. If the slurry flow rate changes through the sampler, this could potentially change the bulk results. With higher flow rates, the larger or denser particles have more momentum to go into the cutter or nozzle without being deflected or rejected due to possible black flow. The smaller or less dense particles can potentially be rejected from the sample. If this does occur, there will be more large particles and less smaller particles in the bulk sample. As an example, if the top size fraction of the 150 micron mass increases by 2.5%, there will be less mass of the smaller size fractions, the plus 2, plus 6, and 15 microns. In this case, the copper assay may increase by 0.48%, and the iron assay may decrease by 0.21%. In this case, 
If the top size fraction increases by 5%, the copper assay may increase by 0.96% and the iron assay may decrease by 0.41%. Here are some of the detrimental effects to operations of biased results. Assays from samples are used for process control and accounting purposes. For planning, production targets need to be met. Plants need to make a certain amount of money to pay its bills and to make a profit. This affects how much tonnage to push through a mill. At the plant control level, grade and recoveries are important. Target values for these are set and accurate, unbiased assay results are required to achieve this. For metallurgical accounting, poor sampling, assaying, or weighing of streams can lead to unbalanced results. A lack of measurement accuracy can lead to unaccounted losses. These are some of the metallurgist responsibilities which require accurate sampling. Troubleshooting, improving and assessing plant performance, monitoring and controlling a plant's operation, accounting and reporting of metal production, and assessing the stock movements throughout the plant. Here is a real example from composites of one operation in which their feed assay was biased 3.5%. This resulted in an incorrect feed assay of 1.81% instead of 1.75%. By using the simple two-product mass balancing equation, the total metal production should have been 33,443 tons instead of the real production of 32,131 tons. This difference of 1,312 tons, or 2.8 million pounds of metal, which at a metal price of $6.8 per pound, equates to $18.8 million. In this case, it was seen as a shortfall in revenues of $18.8 .8 million, as the production forecast was incorrect. Additional losses may have occurred because the metal recovery would have been seen as higher than it really was, 87.82% instead of 87.33%. This may have made the operators happy, to the point where the process was not operating at its optimal. Here is an example from composite samples of how a fluctuating bias or precision errors can affect the mass balancing. This case compares sampling precision errors of 1.5 and 1%. When using mass balancing equations, you can also include errors or uncertainties of the assays in the calculations. However, this requires using partial derivatives. There are now software packages which can do this for you. In this case, the metal production was 32,131 tons. With a 1.5% error uncertainty in the assay results, the uncertainty of the metal production was 567 tons. This means that 32,131 plus or minus 560 tons was calculated as the production. At a 1% uncertainty in the assay results, the uncertainty of the metal production was 378 tons. The extra 0.5% fluctuating difference here in the assay results caused an additional uncertainty in the mass balancing of 189 tons, or 417,000 pounds of metal, which at a price of $6.5 per pound equates to an additional $2.7 million of uncertainty in the production. There are several metallurgical accounting systems available, one of which is Algosys. These systems require accurate measurement results. They are used to collect, evaluate, reconcile data, and perform mass balance computations. They reconcile production data for metallurgical accounting and inventorying purposes, enable you to identify precise locations of metal losses, and to optimize plant recovery. They are used to support decision making, reduce risk, maximize profitability, and ensure compliance. For these metal accounting systems to work properly, they require accurate, non-biased sampling results. The precision of measured values should be known or be able to be determined by a testing. Sampling errors find their way into metal accounting results. Reconciled results are optimal estimates which satisfy the equations. Users must be careful in that reconciled values still carry estimation errors. No amount of data processing will bring estimation errors to zero. These estimation errors must be assessed and managed versus targets on a routine basis. 
This completes the effects on mass balancing section of the introduction to sampling presentations. We here at Heath and Sherwood hope you found this useful and informative and please watch the rest of the series. If you require more information, you can contact us directly.